And even if we're talking about natural versus synthetic, guys, aluminum is natural. <laughs> Like, I don't know how to say it any other way. And even if it had any sort of an issue, you would be getting a lot more of this just by drinking a can of Diet Coke. I love Diet Coke. <music> Fellas, Angel here with Self-Aware Care, your friendly neighborhood cosmetic chemist. And today we are going to be talking about deodorant everything that you need to do to smell fresh because who cares if you look amazing if you smell like a hippie that has been a three-day music festival camping out we're going to cover some marketing hype that you're probably buying into that everyone is pretty much buying into we're going to cover some really unique tips that you probably haven't heard of to stop the smelling and the odor and some of the differences between the types of products that are available for you so first off, understanding what's causing this. So we all sweat a ton. I know I personally sweat like I weigh 400 pounds and I'm constantly climbing a flight of stairs. But <laughs> basically, uh, the sweat that you produce is mostly water. It's like 99% water with a little bit of salt and some trace minerals, some other things. But what's different with the sweat glands on your armpits and in your nether regions is gonna be that they actually have, uh, they secrete a little bit of a fatty substance as well as some proteins. And because the pH level of the skin in those areas is a little bit higher than where the rest of your pH is for your skin, it causes a certain type of bacteria to act upon those nice fatty substances and proteins that are coming from your sweat. And it decomposes those and basically releases that lovely odor that we know is somebody's pits. So what does this mean? Well, the question is gonna be, how can we mask the odor? Uh, it could be how can we stop the bacteria from acting upon the sweat? How can we stop the sweat in the first place? Or how can we just altogether get rid of the bacteria that's acting upon that sweat? So that's kind of what's being tackled throughout your products and I'll get into each product that is trying to do this. But let's start with the, what I think is the most interesting way to handle this is gonna be stopping that bacteria from acting upon the sweat in the first place. And I don't think many guys know about this. And so for the first way to tackle this, very unique way is gonna be killing the bacteria in the first place. So what I would actually recommend is Stridex pads. So these are 2% salicylic acid. Those basically dig into the pores, clear out some of the oil, and they kill the bacteria. And so this is used a lot for acne and it's also called a BHA, but you could use this, wipe it on the pits, wipe it in the areas that you're having issues, and that'll help take care of it. Another option is gonna be using what's called an AHA, a different type of exfoliant. It's uh, like glycolic acid or lactic acid. You're gonna want a 10% solution of this, so you can get this from Notorium. I have uh, the products linked in the description below if you wanna try them out, or from The Ordinary, there's a few different options for you, and another option that you've probably uh, used before and may not be familiar with using it for this is going to be using benzoyl peroxide So this is going to be in like your clean and clear or uh, Panoxyl is another brand that does this but basically when you're in the wash don't use a leave-on because leave-ons can tend to Stain your clothes. It's not very pretty, but when you're using, taking a shower uh, put it apply to your pits area apply it to the nether regions uh, Leave it there for a couple minutes wash it off. You'll be good to go the bacteria will be killed because just a plain wash isn't necessarily killing the bacteria, it's just kind of washing it away. So you're not necessarily getting rid of it, but this is a good way to address that. The same thing that's killing acne bacteria in benzoyl peroxide is gonna do it in the wash. So those are good options for you. And for the salicylic acid or the glycolic, you can also get those in a wash as well. And what's of note with these types of products, depending on who you are, everyone kind of reacts to products a bit differently. So something that might be absolutely amazing for someone might not be the best solution for someone else maybe you get irritation when you're using it day after day so that's something that you kind of have to try and figure out on your own in general and everything that we'll talk about here there's no best product for everybody it's different for everyone what i think is the best product you might think is dog crap right it's different for everyone before the next one quick note if you're finding this helpful please be sure to give this a thumbs up like it subscribe put on the notification bell there's gonna be a lot more awesome content for you where i'm bringing science into appearance aesthetics so that you can get your best outcomes and the next option that you're probably all familiar with is your standard deodorant so this is going to be taking the route of masking the scent or like a you know like a body spray type of thing so some of these will have ingredients in there that will try to stop the bacteria from binding with the sweat as much as it does and in, in, in growing and multiplying basically to try to slow down the scents. But for the most part, they're just masking the scent with these products. And 
it is just that the smell is still gonna be there. I think this is a really good option if you don't sweat that much, you don't naturally smell that much. For me, I could never possibly use that kind of a product on the day to day because I would smell horrible just because I'd sweat so freaking much. It's disgusting. And so the other way of tackling it is gonna be a very common one is gonna be using things like body powders, antiperspirants. So this is really good for the downstairs region. It gets a little bit messy. So you'll see some products that actually have this in the form of a lotion where once the lotion dries, it basically looks the same as when you have this powder applied everywhere. And what that's doing is taking that sweat, that moisture and absorbing it so that it's not uh, there and present to get acted upon from the bacteria as easily. Antiperspirant. So here's gonna get into the big uh, natural versus unnatural. And I'm 100% pro synthetic. Natural doesn't mean that it's safer synthetic actually makes it so that you can get a safer, more consistent profile that's more well studied and for a better cost, less environmental impact than a lot of natural products. And even if we're talking about natural versus synthetic, guys, aluminum is natural. <laughs> like, I don't know how to say it any other way. And even if it had any sort of an issue, you would be getting a lot more of this just by drinking a can of Diet Coke. I love Diet Coke, but basically, no studies, no meta-analyses, any of those have found any sort of issue with aluminum. So if that's your reason for not using a antiperspirant, stop, <laughs> you can use them. Now, a legitimate reason to not use an antiperspirant would be if you were getting irritation from it, and that would be where you might use a regular deodorant. A lot of times what's happening when you're getting irritation is you put on the antiperspirant, you put on a whole lot of it, some of it is getting absorbed and clogging the sweat pores, and the rest of it is just sitting on the skin and a lot of times that's what's causing the irritation so you could try wiping that off uh, as for how to use this and how it works so antiperspirants are aluminum chlorohydrate is the ingredient basically and when this is applied to the armpit it basically forms a gel that is clogging the sweat pores temporarily until it gets washed away or until your skin cells shed and so the best way to do this is to apply it on clean skin at say like nighttime, so you take a shower, you apply it at nighttime before there's any moisture in this area or wetness in this area. And so that allows this gel to really get in and clog those pores so that you'll be good to go for the next day. Uh, one that I particularly like is going to be the Gillette Clinical Protection. Any antiperspirant works great. It's just for someone who really is prone to smelling awful like me, uh, I really like the Gillette Clinical Protection. There's other ones that say clinical on them, I've tried them, I, I don't love them. It just happens to be that I think this one is very powerful, smells really good, and if these aren't doing the job, there's always prescription options for you where they're gonna be a little bit stronger and help you out. If you are insistent on using a natural deodorant, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Maybe you're getting irritation from other deodorants or you're just not comfortable using them for whatever reason. Uh, the only one that I've really tried that I liked was the native deodorant. For me, it was maybe about on par with like your standard type of stick deodorant. Um, definitely didn't compare to anything like an antiperspirant, but it was all right, smells good, that sort of a thing, no skin irritation, so that's a good one. I personally like to rotate a bit of different options depending on what I'm doing that day. If it's a heavier day, I'm using antiperspirant. If it's a lighter day, I'm using like a regular deodorant. If my skin is irritated, I'm using like a regular deodorant. Uh, and some days, if I just don't want to use antiperspirant again, I'm using like a Stridex pad, glycolic, those sorts of things to handle the odor. Really everything to tackle that so that I can smell nice and fresh every day. And of course, for some final bonus tips here, you want to cut down on the sweat. Good ways to do that is to reduce the amount of heat and humidity that's going on in these areas. And so that could be with looser fitting clothing. It could be with trimming the hairs, manscaping, that sort of a thing. Because the more humid that area is, the more the bacteria is going to be able to, is going to love where it's living and be able to multiply and act upon the sweat that's happening in those areas. And of course, if your body temperature is up in those areas, you're going to sweat more. And then this bonus tip here. So if you see this shirt, this shirt is actually like, I don't know, six, seven years old. And you'll notice the colors are still very vibrant. That's because I don't wash my button down shirts or my nicer shirts every single time that I wear them. It is maybe every like five to 10 times that I wear them, uh, depending on what I've done that day or if I was really sweaty or not. But for the armpit area, it tends to smell, even if you didn't do much, especially for me, and so what I'll use instead of washing the entire shirt just to handle the armpit area or trying to like hand scrub the armpit area, which is still gonna kill the color in that area, uh, I'll use hypochlorous acid. There's a lot of different brands for this. This is just one I grabbed from Amazon. They're very, very cheap. If you spray it on the area, 
it is what's used in a lot of facilities to clean. It's not going to bleach the, uh, the clothes. It's not gonna cause any discoloration. It's safe for your skin. And so it's a really good way to make your clothes last longer and look good even though you sweat like a pig like me. So gentlemen, that's it. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching this. Stay tuned for any future videos where I'm bringing science into your aesthetics, appearance to leave the best impressions for the best outcomes. Talk to you soon.